that I think that influenced grime, it influenced hip hop, it did it did crazy things yeah. right. So I signed back with Kemet after that Clash album, like yeah. me, Tibbs, um, One C, and they were kind of like, who's going to be our next thing after yeah. this Clash of success? Um, and I just noticed it. I was like, yo, there was other rappers that were bubbling at the time. Yeah. And they were there was a very much why are you attitude. I think some of them pretty much said it to me. Really? Yeah. And I'm not gonna say their names because some of them I'm friends with. Really? And some of these rappers, some of the rappers who came up to me, came up to me, was like, give them my number. Yeah. Why why they're not signing me? Yeah. Not like why they're signing you. They're not realizing they're saying that. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, they should talk to me. Give them my number, take my number and give it to them. Yeah. One one rapper, I've never ever I've never said his name because I respect him a lot. He's huge now. <laughs> Killer Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Good one. <laughs> Great, I'm glad. We're going to please around here. Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as you need to be. Choose to be one of me. How very dare you, if you go anywhere else. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gknifteyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. It's a pleasure to have you. Big shout out to Sharers and Kerrys, all the people who have been getting down, um, getting loose and standing up for the cause. Uh, yeah, street culture's everywhere. We're doing with it daily. Inside the house today is a uh, compadre of mine roaming the uh, media circuit in the world of uh, street culture. Uh, moving on as an MC, Mud Family. Radio celebrity, uh, Pyro, for instance. Going into media worlds of flip media, flip media, and more. Where's the gentleman? The scholar. The man, the scholar, actually the scholar. No, the flipper side of the My brother, <laughs> love oh, Micah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he is, isn't it? You're doing, you're doing a course at the moment. You're, you're getting into yeah. like, higher higher learning. I'm doing a master's, yeah. I'm doing a master's at the moment in music. Mm. Um, you know, just keeping it in the field. But it's more like musicology mm. than it is anything practical. So I'm just, some of the social issues I talk about online, or I just kind of go off mm. about, you know, racism, misogyny, in music, in a music context. So I'm kind of, but to be honest, I'm behind. I got really? I got one month to finish the first year, uh, so this is the only time I'm coming out of the house. Really, and I'm getting back to work. Yo, <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Wow. Yeah. So what? Your whole year to finish in one month? Yeah. And I've, I've I've done some of it, obviously, but yeah, I've just I've got two big assignments I've got to hand in within the next four weeks. Yeah. Wow, I've, that's a huge undertaking. I'm gonna do it. That's all right. Of course. I'm gonna yeah. do it. It's right. And then I, and then I've got one more year. That's my master's done, and then. I'm, my plan is to do a PhD. PhD. Yeah. Wow, come here, man. You're gonna be mad intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. It's like I always talk about the social issue stuff that I do um, online and stuff. I always focus on that in my um, in my studies, mm. rather than where we come from, and yeah. so, rather than just making it about hip hop, right? Yeah. But I started this series recently on YouTube called. I called it UK Legends, mm -hmm. where I'm. I said I'm going to go through the history of UK hip hop on YouTube, right? Because I feel, I keep I've, over the years, always people talk about, oh, we need a museum, we need yeah, this, yeah, we need yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And cool, there's there's people doing their thing, documenting stuff. Yeah. All of us doing yeah, yeah. these interviews, Dude, I think, are, yeah. are, are documenting that stuff. But I was just like, I want to really tell like the the history, and because I've been doing like just I've just been doing lives mm. where, where I was struggling to keep my podcast going all the time, recording, shooting, getting a guest. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I've just been sitting in front of the camera and doing reaction videos to all this social issue stuff. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I'm going to just do that on the music. So I said, so I asked online, who's the first UK rapper? And then I got all of these different, and I, didn't, I hadn't even looked at half these guys. So, really? so I've just literally sat there and gone through every, like from the beginning. And I've, I was like archiving, kind of like going yeah, through the I'm, pl I'm playing the song for the first time. What? I'm reacting to it live, and then I'm chopping up the video, making a video out of that. I think the answer was... Um, Dizzy Heights was the main answer we came out with in the end, but there was a there was a number of factors wow. that came into that, right? So what I was doing is I was like, actually, this can tie into my studies. So I think when I do my PhD, it may it may sit in line with that series I'm doing. That's incredible! Somehow. What a great idea! Yeah. And I love the fact that it was voluntarily kind of 
brought to you by the people that are around it, the, the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It suddenly becomes this, you know. This You're not hundred percent. Yeah, and then they're they're so involved in it because they're telling me. I'm like, yo, what's this? Mm. Like, uh, answer me this question. And then yeah. I was like, who's the first female British rapper, right? And shout out to Mystery MC, who's who we discovered yeah, it was, right? Right. And she she was getting involved in the debate. So she's she's going to come on the show. I'm going to do an interview oh, with her. Man, like, that's awesome. And like, and I, I didn't even know, I'd never heard of her, right? She's from a group called Family Quest. I don't, and, and Mongo commented on it as well. And I don't think he knew either. He was like, how have I never known this, right? And it was, they were from Islington. And they only had these one, two records. And I'm like, yo, these are people from my end yeah, yeah, that yeah, had yeah. a record out in like the early 80s. Rapping like I, I and they were playing with um, Tim Westwood at Spats places I'd heard of. I'm seeing all yeah. these Come on, Spats, Spats, and I'm yeah. like, what the like? I just didn't. There's so much I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think I know. Yeah. I'm saying I think I'm a scholar on this already, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah. I really don't. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just doing the journey. I think that's the best thing about hip hop is like mm. you're constantly learning. Like mm. that's an education in itself, right? Exactly. And furthermore, <coughs> you know. Contrary to my introduction to you, it was actually hard to kind of pinpoint and accurately place, you know, the defining, how Nova Flip is defined. Because mm. you, you know, and hats off, you were the f first person to almost interview me when I was, you mm -hmm. know, off circuit for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, you were like Kampira Radio, which is why I yeah, saluted yeah. it at the beginning, because uh, that was really seminal for me, because you, yeah, know, man. you, you were like, yo... What you doing? You know, and Jazz from, was there. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Big up Jazz, and and for me, yeah, because and I I only remember this the other day as well. Then afterwards, you gave me a drop. I didn't ask you for it, and I just remember you. One day you messaged me. It's like, yo, check your email, and I'm like, yo, I'm not gonna try and repeat it and all of that. But he was gave me a whole proper killer killer exclusive flip life. I was like. I, need to, I, I was trying to find it the other day because I was like, no, this needs to be on the intro to my YouTube <laughs> yeah, the stuff. New one. <laughs> yeah. Like, I need to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I might even have it. I yeah, might have yeah. It. If, I'm yeah, sure yeah. I, I want to have a look. Yeah, yeah. Have, have a look um, in case I don't. But because I was like, I need to make. I was like, I need to make an intro to this. And I was like, wait, mm. Keller sent me one. Mm. I can. I know I can leave the pyro bit out, but you did a nice mm. little flip yeah. life. And then like, um, Young Spray did a song where he sh where he shouts at me and Big Ben in the bar. So I was big like, up I, Ben, by the way. I, yeah, hold tight, Ben. Yeah, man. Big up Good Big Ben always, man. Yeah, yeah. So um, I wanted to use this young spray bar um, as well. I was like, oh, I need to get this killer killer bit, put this young spray, like, so I can put a bit of an intro yeah, together, yeah, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, I think the, the, the moment for me, and just going straight back to your mm. archiving of, of and knowledge of understanding of mm. of the scene, uh, HFM being on on yeah, the arm yeah. right there. Uh, for those that ain't uh, watching, uh, yeah, he's done that tattoo. That's how we're rolling in here today. That's how we're doing it. So we're rolling <laughs> today. Um, you know, just chatting through my life with you on your show. Yeah, you knew a lot of the cornerstones yeah. of my career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so never mind the podcasts and stuff. You know, yeah. the, you knew from Mudlums. Yeah, yeah, back, yeah, back, yeah, back, yeah. back. Do you know what I mean? Trust. Which is really nice to, uh, it was relatable to an interview when you know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 100%. 100%. And I think that's why, I mean, that's why people like us need to be doing this type of content. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. it, it, you know, I don't know, there's this, this stories to be told and just stuff to be documented that really, and, mm. and the people that need their flowers, right? And like, a lot more people than, than even us. You know what I'm saying? Because we're here doing this. I'll interview you, you yeah, yeah, interview yeah. me. Yeah. Bing, bing, but then yeah. when I find like Family Quest or whoever, I'm like, yeah. oh, who's going to talk into them? Yeah, yeah, I need, they need to. Yeah, that's saying. true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. Especially like 50 years of hip hop. And yeah. or, the, or the writers, because I, I was, that's just not mm. been done before. Yeah. Like, docu like, actually, because they don't speak that much. You know what I'm saying? Just moving, so, it's moving the dial into yeah, a place yeah. of. I know exactly what you mean. Mm. I know exactly what you mean. Um, Blade as well, big up Blade. Yeah, big up Blade, man. Me and Blade got a, a separate show as well yeah. um, called Bigger Than Us that we've just launched. Bigger Than Us. What's the yeah. concept of that? So we just kind of came up with it um, on the phone. So I did the interview like this with Blade in a sense that I, he interviewed me for his platform about my career and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? And it just, it did really well for some reason. We done some quite cool marketing with it because I said... I got into some controversial stories and stuff and it just did better than we thought. It got quite a lot of views 
and people liked it. And a lot of people that hate me, because I've got a lot of people in the scene, as much as people might love me, there's right. a lot of people that hate me in the UK hip hop okay. scene for being so outspoken, right? Yeah. Okay. And especially the older lot. So mm-hmm. Blaze Generation, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of them that are like, <laughs> really? oh, yeah, yeah. Is that a fact? Oh, that's a fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? Have I, yeah. Have I just shot down like half of my viewership? Like, <laughs> no, no. Am I maybe, joking, yeah, maybe. I'm no, joking, but... no, To be fair, Blaze got that viewership that I would imagine would, would, would challenge, be challenged there, by. There's like there's like a divide sometimes, right? In a, in a, in a generational divide, yeah. whatever. Like, I'm just young enough to be of a next generation slightly and be a yeah. bit of a bridge between the younger generation yeah. and like Blade's generation. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I wind them up sometimes and, you know what I'm saying, and I What's stick up for the What's the biggest thing youngers. you've wound them up about? Um, I mean, like, if you were to really coin a moment, it was like, if, oops, if, if we're just talking about <laughs> hip-hop, like, yeah. I just, I, like, I would be like supporting mumble rap when that was a conversation oh, okay. I'd be like yeah what's that shut up I'm saying like yeah I support I'm, I'm mumble li- rap all I'm day I'm a little Yachty fan and I interviewed little yeah. Yachty in the mix of it yeah yeah I interviewed little Yachty um, well, in the mix like, of all of that and I was like yeah he, no it was actually a terrible interview to be honest with you. it was very difficult really? he did it gave me one word answer really? it was really difficult I've, yeah. I've kind of told I told that story in, in, the, in that interview actually okay. but um, yeah but that, that people were annoyed that I was doing that Rodney P inboxed me like yeah like, I kind of get what you're saying with this kid but He's disrespectful. Like he, he felt the need to tell me that this kid, mm-hmm. but he's disrespectful. And mm-hmm. so, anyway. And what was your response when when that happened? I, I can't remember. I, just get, I gave him my explanation that you know, look, he's just a kid doing his thing, and it was cool. Like he, he we just had a chat about yeah, it. Yeah. It wasn't like you know, he, he was like, yeah, cool. I get what you're saying. Like, it's cool. Um, but he, he, you know, he wanted to say what he wanted, get his point across as well, or, or whatever. Um, so anyway, I went on there to Blade's um, channel. And a lot of those people who think I'm a, like I'm a prick or whatever watched my story where I wasn't here triggering everyone as much. I was just yeah. saying, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, this me. Some of them don't know I'm from Mud Family or nothing. No, they, don't, no. they don't really even know. So they're like, clock, yeah. they're like, oh, he's this guy. And they were like, actually, he's all right. And just like, you know that seeing me yeah. talk, being normal, yeah. be, like showing Blade so much respect, yeah. whatever, whatever. So they were like, oh, he's actually... Blade was like, he got so many phone calls from God. I thought that guy was a prick, but he's actually all right. That's so and like, some of them now still follow me and interact yeah. and all, all that kind of stuff. So, that so that's why we, anyway, that's a long story, isn't it? But he, we were after that talking a lot about, so obviously that episode worked. Yeah. What more can we do yeah. with that chemistry? And eventually I was like, look, we can do a show where we're not talking about me or you. We're just talking about stuff, stuff, stuff in the scene, stuff, something to bring things together. And Blade was just on the phone and he was like, look, whatever we do, it's got to be bigger than us. Like he just he used to yeah. said it in a, in a sentence and we were like, yo. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ding! <laughs> <laughs> There's something in that. They hold that thought. Mm. So wow. there's one episode out, but we just shot another one with um, Gordon Simba, Roots Maneuvers manager the other day. Nice. Which was cool. And we were talking about gatekeeping. That was yeah. a topic, and whether we need gatekeepers, yeah. or whether they're positive, negative. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was our topic. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Well, there's a, that's a that's an opening title of ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, triggery, triggery. It might be. Mm. Um, I think uh, you've walked a life so far as um, come through the ranks, and uh, honed a, honed a craft. Mm. Um, based on your environments, things that were around you at the time, and we, you know, we talk about Mud Family. Let's mm-hmm. go a little bit deeper. Let's take it right back. Let's take right. it right back to North London to the more gritty, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, northern kind of times. Let's get yeah. into it. Um, boy, I don't know where do, where do, how far back do we go? Where do I start, man? <laughs> what was school like for you? Um, school. I don't think I've ever talked about school in like interviews like that. I don't. I don't, I didn't really like school. I don't, I think I was a bit awkward kid. I wasn't really, um, but from primary school, uh, all the way from primary school, right? I know I have talked about it a bit because what I've talked about is who was there, right? So uh, me and Big Ben were there. Yeah, yeah. From, well, you guys from were from pri- early? From primary school. No, no, before primary school. Really? Our, our parents were friends. So we already went to the same school because oh, we were friends and that, right? Tree right there. And then my boy Rags, who's also FLRP, um, he was there. That's like three of the main mm-hmm. people in the flip movement. We were together in primary school right it. um big j who later started uk overstood which i think wow. changed the entire uh, music uh, industry in this country uh, and is halfly responsible for the, the those street rappers that came like, yeah. like he was he was with us wow primary school um 
and NASA from Mud Family. So that's what that was my connection there. So my connection to the Mud Family thing goes all the way back there, right? Um, I started listening to hip hop then in around nine, ten years old in in primary school, right? And I remember I had like that's why I was looking at all these like I love looking at the stuff, right? Graphic design. I remember I had one. I don't know which book it was. Whether it was. Um, uh, which of like the do you know the few classic? No, I might have even had some graffitis, mm. you know, from uh, back, from back then, them. or maybe the books, whether it's like street art or yeah, um, yeah, go, spray can, spray can art, subway spray can art. art, yeah, spray can art, subway art. One of those books, maybe I had, mm. um, which my older brother had given me, right? He just given me this book, and I remember sitting in, I had it in primary school, we're sitting in the playground, I'm oh, showing man. it to people, I'm like, look at this, we're like nine, ten years old, <laughs> and um, I wish I remembered his name. If I asked Skinny, he would know, right? Because there was like a teacher in my school who was like, he was more like a support teacher, right? So he wasn't one of any of the main teachers, but he was there, he was like a helper, he was always in the playground, right? He's quite young. And he saw us sitting on the bench with this thing and he came over like, yo, what are you, what are you lot looking at? And he was like, I'm a writer. Like, and he, I'm sure he shouldn't be telling us this, like, right? Or, or at least he was like, I'm into... Do you know what I'm saying? I'm into, yeah. hip, into hip-hop and graffiti. And he, he sat there and looked... So he's young. he's young? He was young, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's, he's like, in, I don't know, in his early 20s or whatever. So he's sitting there... What, looking at the book with us from then on I always had a connection with him you like, don't remember the teacher's name I can't remember his name now this Yo. is so crazy yeah and the thing is dial in Nova dial in I'm, I want to ask Ben like, I want, no, I want, there's no way it's going to come to me now Yo, that's crazy I, I, haven't, like, I haven't even thought about this for years right <laughs> but then from then on I would always I talk to him about what albums I'm listening to all that kind of stuff right um, this is we'll, we'll come back but I fast forward so that's primary school when I f- was finishing secondary school is when I started um, hanging around with Skinny and all of that, right? And I remember sitting in Skinny's house, like, you know, in the spot where we're up to what we're up to. Mm. And he came to the door. <laughs> that, te- that teacher. What? To come to come <laughs> grab something, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. So, and I'm like, so, I'm sorting him out. Like, <laughs> yo, yo. Incredible. <laughs> That's why I, says, I need to ask Skinny because he would know. Student, <laughs> the server. Wow, and it's like yo, yeah. Anyway, teach this is good. Nah, it's, it's not the only one, you know. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. uh, he wasn't wow. at the school anymore, but that was a tra- that was a weird pivotal change in my life because I'm not I'm not outside. I'm doing this kind of street stuff I shouldn't be probably doing, but like I was coming, I was young doing it, mm. so I'm bumping into people like that. Mm. He's from my school, whatever. And then I, there was someone else because my brother was still at that school, and um. There was a girl who used to come around, and I'd been around her loads of times. Mm-hmm. She came to the club with us, like Scarla, I'm in there. And then I realised, oh, sh- she's actually my brother's teacher. <laughs> and, I, and I've been like, <laughs> I've been busting her every week. Yo, like, so. <laughs> yo, that's mad. Yeah. Yo, this street life, real street life right here, mm. getting away with it. Anyway. Brazen. Yeah, yeah. Yo, like, <clears throat> when you, when, you know, when I think of those times quite mm. quite wasn't there obviously but street life and hip hop were really close mm. it was one and the same now I'd argue you know and there's obviously some takers out in the room that would probably disagree with me but mm. that street you know the emergence of grime and drill mm. uh, elements of drum and bass you know mm. the rude boy era maybe some garage I don't know but every so often you when we get into the late nineties of things, you know, there's only the truest of true. You know, we're talking Skinny Man, Mud Family. They're the street. Yeah, Doesn't yeah, get yeah. much more street. Everyone else was kind of backpacking around and being a bit kind of, a bit like me. You know what I mean? It's like it was like that. There wasn't much. There wasn't a lot of heat on hip hop in the that. UK hip hop yeah. scene. It wasn't. I mean, for me, when I came into it, the first stuff I heard was Mud Family. I didn't really know about this scene, mm-hmm. and then I heard like. Rodney P and I heard everyone else of mm. that era, right? Mm. Um, it felt a bit more street then, but I think very suddenly that changed. Mm. And when Kung Fu came out, I think, I didn't see it happen at the time, but this is one of the issues I talk about a lot, right? Is that I feel like that scene got kind of whitewashed in a sense, right? The leaders of that scene that came under us, mm. like, and even the audience, seem to change like even I would go to Kung Fu Ooh. and it was quite a multicultural audience yeah. or you'd go to yeah. um, Flavor of the Month before I went yeah. to Kung Fu I think Flavor of the Month might be one of the main nights I yeah. remember going to right yeah. DJ 279 right. big up 279 so yeah, yeah. 279 would put on Flavor of the Month at um, Subterranea yeah, right. and it would be a multicultural but yeah. it would be more of a black audience yeah yeah yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I'm there it's I'm your like, birthdays same thing it's like, your yeah, birthdays right. yeah right I don't know if it's who the promoters are because obviously 
Ish FM birthdays again. The, there's black people running it, but it's still catering to the same hip hop mm. scene. And yeah. then Kung Fu came, and then certain you know a number of rappers who came out, us included. I think we're actually yeah. the forefront yeah. of it in a way that we yeah. you know there's With a the, the, poster boys. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I, well, I'd, I'd say us, and you know more more specifically that like Skinny and Chester and, yeah. and Task Force, and then Jest who became these quite big white rappers in uh, in the UK and then all these other kind of white kids a bit younger than us or my age because mm. I was there young yeah because mm. so, all the kids at my school mm. suddenly started rapping and they had their crews yeah. that were more like they were more the younger crews but I was their age I was just in the other crew with the older yeah, lot, yeah. yeah. so those generations came and then another generation came and then you've got like high focus etc and yeah. it's like, like no, I've jumped forward there but the audience changed racially. I know it's happened and it, it caused something a bit strange. Mm. Um, not that it, I don't think it happened maliciously, um, but it created something where those white rappers are the forefront of this. And I, I really want to sit with Chester and Farmer and stuff one day and talk about it because I've yeah. seen them touch on it briefly, yeah. but I haven't spoken po- properly. I, I, Farmer, hasn't, yeah, yeah. Farmer said he'll come and do a podcast. Yeah. So, but... Because I don't think they're comfortable about how it went either. Because yeah. it's a lot of kids that, like I say, they're not from that street element, but they still by us got kind of felt welcomed to this thing, which is fine, it should. Um, but then it got to the thing where Graham comes along. Yeah. And even before Graham comes along, there's street rappers around. Yeah. 12 stone yeah. like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying like and then and there's production like Sub Blow you know like yeah. Johnny Cash and them that were doing that kind of tempo that was sounded it was okay. like precursor for dubstep it was like yeah yeah, yeah. way new beats that might be that might be <coughs> that might be beyond me but um and obviously there's other rappers on the streets like Scheme Big P like you yeah, know yeah. you know who are, doing, and yeah. who are doing their thing but I don't know, you know I won't speak for them because they've done you know they've done quite well or whatever in it but like there's other, like Big Ben. Let me just say Big Ben, yeah, yeah. right? I'm me and Big Ben are the same age. We're from yeah, the same yeah. crew or whatever. Like, he's not in that time being afforded the same opportunities as me. Yeah. And like, Big J, who later became UK Overstood, right. right? He would come to things with us. He came to Kung Fu with us and they wouldn't let him in once. Well, so it's like, the streets, they were a bit scared of that. Once they kind of created this UK pop scene where everything felt a bit safe and we got control of it, it was like, oh, let's keep that over there. And then they also got this kind of, like ego that comes with it, which we all get within hip hop, where like the, these kids end up leading the scene and they're like, we're doing something with this message. So that's the real hip hop. And those people over there, oh, the they're saying something negative. So we, we, they're not hip hop. And it's almost like you're now saying the thing that was the most hip hop yeah. is not yeah. anymore. Or, or, yeah. and, there's all these, and there's all these weird dynamics going on. So. You know what? It's, 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 see, this is why he's good, you see. Because now you've got my turbines moving. Um, mm. I've got a few theories on this. Okay. I've got a few theories on this. I'd so, love, love to hear that. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, like, let's take it back to rock and roll. Yeah. Um, predominantly black um, yeah. instrumentalists, singers, yeah. musicians. Then Elvis came. There's a few others. Chuck, yeah, yeah. Chuck, Berry, uh, Chuck Berry and then went into, oh, mm. what was his name? Piano guy. Not um, Little Richard. I'm talking about the... Um, Rock around the clock guy. Anyway, but Elvis came yeah. around. Poof. Yeah. White singer, white guitarist, uh, yeah. uh, poster boy, goes to the army, yeah. comes back a hero. Um, Eminem certainly heralded a new way of thinking yeah. about rappers. Yeah. That's the first thing. Second of all... With rock and roll, though, if we go to rock and roll, <laughs> running, yeah. I'm not sure the answer on this because I haven't analysed yeah. it properly. What happened next? Like everything, did, ha- everything happened with hip hop. Pretty much. But I'm saying, what did? Where is rock and roll now? And who's who? Who was the next artist that came out after Elvis? Did a lot of white artists become the yeah, lead, yeah, yeah, the lead exactly. of it? Well, yeah, but it, what it also did was it opened the door to. Um, well, it became pop music. Yeah, exactly the point. Okay. So, so let's take that for 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 the first case and point that Eminem came around and that popularized um, hip hop into rap and in an age where you know Gwen mm. Stefani was was going bananas, mm-hmm. holler back, and um, Eve, um, MTV bass era, almost yeah, 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 fell yeah, into yeah. that. You that's, know my, I mean? that's my era. That's my era, yeah. hold tight, hold tight, everybody. <laughs> you know, I used to do the, sound, I used to do the in, intermissions for that, the beatbox as well. Is it, yeah? You know, the little cartoon characters. Oh, sick, yeah, sick. Um, but anyway, yes, that's another story. <laughs> but then, um, enter the era of universities having sponsors 
for their fresher events. Okay. Because what that suddenly does is it it br- opens the market yeah. for um, younger, impressionable 17, 18 year olds mm. just going into college and universities, having these amazing crazy lineups mm. of new old and everything acts and then it becomes this big chase to fill up as many venues because R- Renault and Peugeot have got yeah, spots yeah, yeah. or Jack Daniels are suddenly you know what I mean because everyone knows that it's a big you know event that kids coming in in September need to be so you're saying the sponsorship like pay, it, paid for it yeah and then gave a yeah. gave a big gave a platform, platform. Okay, and then so bled into club culture yeah yeah, yeah. which then um, it uh, it activated a lot of the young people at the time. So let's go clubbing. We're going clubbing. You know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. The next thing they're going everywhere. Mm. Um, predominantly white from out of town coming into the cities. Mm, mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? So that was another theory that I kind of had. So who are you kind of attributing that to in your story? In in that? Um, how, how do you mean? Who like, am I? Like attributing? we were saying Eminem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd say Eminem. Emin- okay. okay. I'd so say just Eminem. his just when he came out and um, yeah. I think is though. I think that's very true. And I'm only realizing. Because this has got a whole other, like, there's a whole other side of this conversation where I've mm-hmm. noticed quite right wing and even racist white rappers in this country and in America right. who are making rap music, like, you know, making music in a black culture but pushing something quite the opposite, right? Right. That's a whole next oxymoron that I'm addressing. I've only re- started to realize how much Eminem plays into that um, recently. Because I, I, I don't think it's Eminem's no, it's business. Not his, it's not him, yeah. but it's his. I've realized how much his fans do. I think we mentioned before I started that I said I'm going at this rapper today. Um, yeah. and I wasn't going to give him all the time. I want to give him all the time, yeah, 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 time yeah. but I, no, I, I mean, I, I, I'll touch on it briefly just because he's he, he's Eminem obsessed. This song he's got out is on an Eminem beat, right. doing an Eminem flow. And what, there's this guy, this guy Tom McDonald, I don't know if you've even seen him, right? He's, he's blown up now in yeah. America, very right wing Trump supporting rapper, yeah, right? Yeah. I've been doing reactions to his videos and calling them out and dissecting right. the racism in them and all sorts mm-hmm. of like. But someone made a great point, Talib Kweli actually, because Talib Kweli's been calling them out. And, really? And on the news, everything. He's been really, really awesome. doing it okay, right. And he said that he makes rap music for people who hate rap music, right? <laughs> and I've even seen like a, I've even seen a bumper yeah. sticker on a wow. car in America and it says, I hate rap, but I love Tom McDonald, right? Wow. And then... Like, and it's like this like these redneck kind of, and it's like, what, what do you even mean by the hate rap part? Basically, it's like that's intertwined into their racism. I hate rap and black culture, but I love Tom McDonald because he's. And then anyway, I, I, I tell that bit of the story because I've noticed that from then. And then recently, a few people have said it about Eminem. The Eminem, someone said it in a positive way actually. They said Eminem brought people that didn't like rap to rap music, and they were saying how great that was. And there is there is a positive in that. Um, but I think that did bring a lot of these people who are not culturally aware of the roots of hip hop and what it represents, it's like in a social political um, way, and it just brought them all here. And they don't, they didn't really like rap. They just like Eminem. Do you know what I mean? Like, and there's millions of them across the yeah. world. And now, after generations of generations of that, yeah. it's kind of it's split off into you know yeah. some strange things but um what happened here though i think all those things are you know all those things are really interesting conversations and are huge conversations on a global scale but in our little uk hip hop scene it it's connected to that but it's also not and it's also like it didn't work for us right mm. so we got these there was a moment where these rappers are like the biggest rappers in this scene. Like I said, the Skinny Manchester mm. um, and these white rappers who are the biggest in this scene. Those rappers are actually connected to the streets, right? Mm. And they're like working with Grime, working with people, street mm. rappers and all of that. They're connected everywhere, but the audience is not quite mm. connected the same way. They're not seeing that. <coughs> so then when these other, you know, promoters, whoever it may be who did it, naturally, I'm sure they never meant for it to to happen, started pushing out the streets. Mm. Um, It died. Mm. That's what, like, then Grime came along. That We we were so anti against Grime. Mm. When Grime was, I know you're, I know, I like having a conversation with you because I know you're someone who Mm. is in all these cultures and, you know what I'm saying, and even just, you're like, being a beatboxer of your caliber, I think everyone's impressed by it. So yeah, they're all yeah, so gonna ro- they're all gonna rock with you. You yeah, can yeah. do grime. You can. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know you've I've seen you I've seen you've got relationships with those artists yeah, and stuff respect, like that. I appreciate that. Um, 
so you get it. But some of the other hip hop guys will be looking at them grand goes, oh, they're not, they're not, they're not as good as us. They just repeat the same stuff and yeah, yeah, they're yeah. not this and they're that. Yeah. And they had a whole negative thing. And it's like, we were the main scene at one point. Yeah. yeah? In 2006, I, I put out my album, my first album. And um, that's when One Extra started. And I met when we had Rodney P, yeah. Scalab, all yeah. of the DJs all in. were all in. And, they were, and it was us, they were playing. And the grime thing was creeping in, yeah. right? There was, no, don't get me wrong. There was the grime thing had been around a few a few years then, right? Mm. But um, and had a few, you know, obviously Dizzy Rascal and a few big stars. But then still pushing underground. And we, uh, I think, us being so negative to them. And the same thing happened later with Giggs' generation mm. of what do they now call UK rap, yeah. which to separate some of why why they separate UK rap and UK hip hop yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But again, they weren't. No, our scene we didn't accept them so they're like alright cool the we'll, have we'll, been about for a while yeah so we're like we'll do our own thing then yeah. and their thing yeah that wasn't whitewash that was you know that was get, get blue, get, get, is what is now is was not what, what became a like a pop yeah. industry yeah. you know what I'm saying like yeah. as it should you know what I'm saying but that's what I, I think that's why UK hip hop that UK hip hop scene got left behind I didn't know he was going to go here today it just, it, just, it just ends up happening he didn't know he was coming here today yeah, didn't he <laughs> I shut the door and we just met it. <laughs> That's my our business. <laughs> um, I, no, I, uh, I think for its time, and I say that loosely because it still applies to a lot now, I think mm. um, there's still a lot of, there can be, and this is only obs- observations, you understand, because uh, it's nothing to do with me. I'm just here for the popcorn. Mm. Uh, there, there, is an, a, a, there is a negative attitude sometimes to... Mm. certain uh, purveyors, people that have come before us or gatekeepers of sorts that, yeah. that you know, I, it's, 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 you know, it's not like that. It's like this. You shouldn't be doing that. It, 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 it almost needs, you, you need to prove your authenticity. You need to prove mm. your, your uh, realness. You need to, I think there's that as well. So when something like grime comes along, that completely knocks it off its hinges. Even drum and bass to an extent, it was like, mm. if it wasn't for Goldie, they'd have something to say about that as well. Do you know what I mean? So, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure they did every time. Yeah. Like, some of them. I think, I think there's some of that. And the ones that push through just don't have it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it is a negative, like you say. And don't get me wrong, I was part of it. Do you know what I'm saying? The thing is, I was part of it. Right. I think we're all like that a bit. The, the younger people, have an attitude to the olders, the olders have an attitude to the youngers, this sound has an attitude to that sound, everyone thinks, thinks they're the best. That's part of hip hop culture, that, right? And part grime of and everything. Growing up as well, yeah. And part of, yeah, of course. Both sides, and and yeah. most of us are that age when yeah. we're really, like, at the main time, um, pushing forward in these scenes. So, even me, I was like, yeah, we're the best, but yeah, yeah, I think like, the grime thing's all right, but da, da, da. But I still go to the gram club, so mm-hmm. I was shouting rubbish. Because I was there. I was there, like, yo, what's what doing it now? We're doing it now. I'm not Nova. I'm, I'm, and then I think, I'm Johnny. I think there was, there was, a, there was a changing point when P's and Q's came out, where yeah. I was like, this is yeah, yeah, as yeah. good as anything yeah. and better than going on in the UK pop scene. Yeah. Like, it, it was so good. And he was rapping. Like, I was like, is this even grime? Is this, like, is that, yeah. I, I, he's just cold. Yeah. All right, so let's throw some yeah. more in that mix there. Ones that crossed over in a way. I'm going to seed it with Skibbity and Debt, Two Time Freestyle. That Two Time Freestyle was crazy. I don't even know if I know it. This Double time terrible. over hip hop. Oh, no, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, do wanna, I do know what you're talking about. Oh, well, that was actually a song they put out, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. No, no, I remember that. Yeah, that was a big Whatever advancement. Whatever was that, because they had a video yeah, to it. Right. It was like they, yeah, they put right. out a, um, yeah, oh, it's like a white background. Yeah, we're talking about two, 20, 2002, 2003. Okay, sick. Crazy. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing that, because I, I was never really into that scene, right? Mm. Although, I, I've said this in another story, I think that was probably my first time hearing British MCs was listening to like jungle tapes yeah, in yeah. primary school, but sure. I just didn't know what was what. I was never like me too. Here. I didn't really know what to make yeah. of it at the time because it because mm. I was the, the music of that time, and I remember being like eleven or twelve, thinking, "No, I'm going to mm. stick with Public Enemy for a minute." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, fr- I'm afraid that was that my start as well. To it sounds too Public much Enemy. like it still mm. feels like acid house to me, and I'm not really a hardcore mm-hmm. house kind of guy. That's the thing with Jungle. It was when it switched a little bit, I kind of got it a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was about it, but it was, the rest of it beforehand, yeah. I liked the MCs going fast, but I didn't get it. It was mm-hmm. music, really. Okay, so I remember that happening. I didn't yeah. know if that. I didn't know if I saw that as a crossover at the time, but I just remember thinking, oh, they're doing hip hop. That's yeah. that's quite cool. Yeah. And then thinking, and think it felt together. It felt mm-hmm. like bringing something mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. That's might might have mm-hmm. been an influence to why I always kind of 
like the idea of bringing yeah. together. Um, who else was a crossover then or soon after? Mm. Big Brothers. Ooh, yo, <laughs> yo, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, Big Brothers, yeah, absolutely. That, that was a, a moment. Yeah, it was. Because they came out like, it wasn't even, what was it comparable? Not Black Eyed Peas, but something else. They were, they want something else. And the, the funny thing is, right, I don't know, I can't remember when they came out, right? Might have been 2002. I remember Skinny was signed at the time yeah. and sitting in, I would be, I'd go with him to his label meetings, yeah, right? Yeah. And he signed to a major and all of that. So we're sitting here discussing all of this. And we're like, okay, rappers, make, like, they've got a number one, I think. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh my God, mm-hmm. a rapper. And they were kind of like, yeah, it's, it's not quite it really because mm-hmm. it's a bit gimmicky. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it doesn't mean we're going to be able to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're having all these conversations. But, um, before that, right, I supported MOP in 2001 at the Stratford Rex, right? This was one of my... Proudest. Jesus, at the Stratford Rex? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. MOP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And, um, 2001? 2001. Yo, that must have been a madness. <laughs> no, it was a madness. It was a madness. I don't, like, I don't even know if I'd ever been Ooh. there before. Wow. Um, I'm like 18, yeah. maybe, right? I've just had my first record up. Um, and because I've got this record out, I'm getting certain... Bookings or whatever. I don't know, I can't remember who promoted it. I don't think it was 279 because I don't remember him doing anything. He might have, but mm. he, I remember 279. I did a few of his events. I, I supported uh, yeah, he did a lot. Alcoholics. Yeah. That was definitely 279. Yeah. I support a lot of people, but this was the big mm. one, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> MOP, um, Shreffer Rex, and Big Brothers were also on the support. But I didn't really... In fact, no, Big Brothers were on every single support I did that year. Really? And the girls weren't part of the group. It was really? just the three boys. So they put the three... girls in and then it changed the whole thing. Yeah. They, so a record label found them. And I, I, I'm going to interview them one day. And yeah. Find, this out, find out yeah. this story, right? Because I'm sure they've told it, but it just be... I don't know whether they did it first or a label found them and said, you're yeah. going to need something to balance this out. Um in a sense, that was the early, like, that was, I've never thought this before, and I hope nobody, I hope my, my people don't take offence, but that was kind of like before N-dubs with yeah. the male-female thing. Absolutely. I never really, before I never Black really thought, thought, thought as well. Of that. Yeah, it probably was before. But anyway, I don't want to disrespect Big Brothers, yeah. Obviously, they rapped really <coughs> American and it was really commercial. It wasn't yeah. really for us, right? And I just, I did this, I did, at that day we did the sound check yeah. for, um, Stratford Rex, right? Me and Ben. So Ben's like my hype man. Yeah, yeah. We've done the sound check. Massive room. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting the sound right. Cool. Then they come to do their sound check after me. Mm. And obviously we didn't rate them because they rapped American. And at this point, everyone had stopped rapping American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're like, what are you doing? Yeah. But it was the thing that we tried. But anyway, I was, so I was kind of, I'm sitting on the side of the stage watching them sound yeah, check. Yeah. I think, who are they? They haven't done it. They, you know, they haven't yeah. bust yet. So I'm like, who the hell are these guys rapping yeah. American? And they're like, one of them, halfway through their song doing sound check, one of them stopped the beat, like, yo, stop, stop, stop. And he's like, yo, 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 do that verse in your other voice. <laughs> and me and Ben are just there, like, what? And then wow. he goes and he restarts the song and he does it in another American accent. <laughs> I was just like, we were just like, what the fuck is this? Really? You know what I'm saying? Big them up though, I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not saying. It was just crazy to me at the time. It's like a it? Rosetta Stone of fucking <laughs> English language, like strict. <laughs> Had to talk American, but yeah, wow. like at that time, that no people forget, but that went number one, and they had to rap American in order to do it, it and it was really weird. That was really weird. It, it was really yeah. weird. I don't know, if, but it had a moment. Yeah, it did have a moment. And, and one of them, one of them definitely follows me. We follow each other on TikTok. I did have a little chat with him and say, oh, oh we nice. should do, do, we should do an interview one day. Um, but that was kind so of that damage up. era, wasn't it? And maybe yeah, yeah, like, okay. Post Eternal, kind of that kind of time. Well, it was kind of UK pop R and B things going on. Yeah, that was quite cool. Yeah, that was quite cool. That's true. I wasn't really into the honeys and stuff like that, but you know, I I, I, fuck, I definitely fucked with Damage. Yeah, I like Damage in that. Yeah, Damage. We were just young. We were just kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Phallus Infusion. We did bring that up. Now that was a tr- yeah. change of events. That was crazy. Yeah. So that was groundbreaker. That yeah. was yeah groundbreaker. But again, it didn't. That's what. That's way ahead of his time. Because mm. that's real authentic UK oh. rap on a, like, this is a banger. Yeah. Like, the streets can rock with it. We can rock with it. Yeah. And we did. But also, this can play on the radio. This can, do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. he had two two songs. The one with... Big um, and Bashy as Tubby well. T, right? Yeah, rest in peace, Tubby T. Yeah. Yeah. Both 
crazy songs, right? Mm. And so that that was a moment, but it didn't do what Big Brother's done. Nah. So it just wasn't ready yet. The, the, the industry weren't ready for the street nah. again. Mm. And the, do you know the funny thing is, I, I, again, this is something Skinny would have to tell the story on properly. Um, he signed to Raucous Records. What? Um, fallacy. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, he did. Rockers UK. There was a conversation about and that. And so he that. made that was yeah, he'd signed that was all everyone uh, no yeah. even I don't know if I don't no, know if it's any, been talked about in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if any promos uh, went out whatever, this. but I just knew, right? Right. And um but that's that's jumping forward. But obviously he he made his album and stuff and then eventually he went with Virgin because uh, Rockers Records closed down. That's the only yeah. reason it didn't go Stock forward, off. right? Because yeah. they even in America they shut the whole label up, right? Right. Um but apparently we were gonna sign to them first. Because I, I just remember going to Skinny's house one time and um, I got in the house, I think Mongo was there. It might be Mongo who even said it. One of, one of them said to me, yeah, we might sign to Rokas. I was like, yeah? They're like, yeah, yeah, they're starting Rokas UK. Like, they, they've they got in touch. Really? And I was just like, okay. Like, so, and this time, I, like, <coughs> wow. I think Skinny Skinny already was, I don't know. He, he was, whether he had his deal already as a solo artist, I don't know. But... I was just that was just said mm. to me once. I never heard about it again. Mm. The next thing I heard was they, that Spalacy had signed to Rockers wow. a little while later, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna throw another one in the mix. Mm. Okay, think for life cipher, think Kano, think Del Funk Homo Sapien, think Del Soul. The gorillas. The gorillas. Mm. Now they are they were a game changing cross mm. genre. Yeah, hundred percent. I think I, I, might, I don't think if I, I don't know if I would have seen it at that way at the time. Mm. But you're right. And of course, that Fire Side for playing at the Brits and stuff mm. like that, um, and being on their records. Obviously, I know they were, they got replaced on a lot of, of records, and there's a whole story behind that. But mm. yeah, that was yeah. That's a, a and, crazy um, moment. What's her name? Who sings with who sings with them as well? Uh, Roses Gabor. Roses Gabor. Yeah, big girl up. Sweetie I, Irie, hold tight, sweetie. See, I'm a genre changing group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just mad. <laughs> and like? I remember the mad thing is I don't know if she sang with them back then, but this mm. is gonna this is gonna be a segue. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if a professional here. You see, <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be a jump no. forward, but it's <laughs> gonna be a great segue, okay, right? Because I remember Roses Gabor. Yeah. I remember her from way back. She used to run around with Estelle. Really, I used to always see them. They were always together. Every every in Dingwall, Subterranean, yeah. and Estelle, Estelle would be rapping on every single open mic, tearing it. Like to the point, I never heard a record from her, but I knew some of her bars because I was just <laughs> she would be everywhere yeah, yeah. rapping. You know what I'm saying? Sitting there spitting her verses and on every open mic, and I was going to every one at the time. And um, yeah, Roses was like that was her brethren. I didn't even know she made music or whatever. That yeah. was just Estelle's brethren who I'd always see them around and chat to them and all of that. And then years later, I saw her doing a thing and doing a thing with gorillas and all that. I was like, oh, sick. You know what I'm saying so both of them. Yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, the segue is yeah, Estelle. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over there is, there is a real case study with Estelle, isn't there? Okay. I think what so. What do you mean by that? Oh, just, just in what happened. Just her, her career yeah. and what she did to get to the place she wants. Because, you know, let's, <coughs> let's be honest, like she's a massive Lauren Hill fan. Okay, it yeah. starts with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. But she's she's got bars and she's ready to go. And at for the for its time, whether it was in Deal Real, yeah, jumping up on mic, she's everywhere. She was just everywhere. And then she was doing she was it. She was she was one of us. Yeah, yeah. Like, she was like fully one yeah. of us. Like in the sense, you know, she's she's on Skits's projects and yeah, like, she's, she's you know Black Twang, on, and, 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 Black Twang. Yeah, um, I feel like actually, okay, we. Black Twang maybe should get the shout yeah, first. Should get the shout. Because I think he yeah. had a bit of a crossover moment. Yeah. Especially with the record featuring Estelle. Yes. And that probably gave her her gate and she got her deal and then she yeah. did the 1980 thing and all of that. And Banksy was all over the album covers for each time, wasn't it? Okay. Oh, yeah. He, he, he uh, did all kick off. Yeah. For, he did for her album as well. I know he, he did, did. I think he did three I know album he covers. Did, I know he did Black Twangs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. That's mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so. Black Twang had a moment, but you know it was like not quite. Again, it's yeah. just, it's not it's not what it should deserve to be. Um, but then there and was then Estelle then it was, had that moment, but, but then, then she had a real yeah. real moment later on. And that was seminal. Like, yeah, I was in America when that was out. I had the only time I've been to America in my life. Yeah, it just that song happened to be yeah, out yeah. of time, and. I was just, I was just so proud. Like, yeah. I'm, but I'm, I'm just like every time I'm shopping. Like, it's just crazy. all on the radio. And I was in Foot Locker. All yeah, I knew yeah. is I'm in, I'm in LA, 
I'm in Miami. Yeah. I was going. I was going Miami, to most places. Yeah. yeah, and I'm in Foot Locker. Oh. Every 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 <laughs> yeah. state I'm going in Foot Locker. Yeah, yeah. I'm going in all the shopping and centers, it. and I'm hearing it every single yeah. time. And yeah. I'm in the car and the radio out yeah. there. And I'm hearing it. The biggest songs. Yeah. Of the time. You know, especially in American radio, they yeah. play the same song over and over again. This is the songs of the moment, right? Yeah. It was like T.I. and Rihanna. Yeah, that's correct. And, Absolutely. Um, and Estelle. Yeah. And this was while well That's right. Like I was in time. Miami at the time. I had a girlfriend at that time. And, and mm. I remember, you know, every time I come on, because I was British, the missus would be like, like that's that. That's mad. You, I, you, I was probably there when same you, when you yeah. were Smoothie, yeah. Smoothie King. You go into Walmart. You go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It was just bang, It was just bang, there. Bang. And you know the crazy thing is? Years later, you know that's it's not a song I've ever played. Like, that, don't be wrong, I, I, I have, but yeah. it's not like a song that's on my playlist that I'm playing in my house, right? No. But my daughter's into music. She don't, she doesn't, she doesn't really create music or anything, but she knows songs. Yeah. She shows me music all the time. She's like, I listen to this artist, or she, she don't even like telling me because mm-hmm. she wants to keep it to herself. But yeah, I'll hear yeah, something, yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. like, who's that? Who's yeah. that? <laughs> and then I have to get yeah. it out yeah, of yeah. her. But she knows old music. I hear her playing stuff all the time. I'm like, how oh, do you know that? How do you know that? And yeah, lo and behold, that song, I just started hearing it out of a bedroom a lot. About about three, four years ago, I'd hear that Stop song. It. And she just playing this American Boy song all the time. Like it's, It was just in her playlist. I'd knock on her door like, yo, where, where'd you know about that song yeah. from? She was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, big song. And I was like, right, like, I'd known her for years. Yeah. I was like, it's crazy. So that song, you know, for it to have done that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's fast forward then yeah. to... to I got a story with everyone. Yeah, yeah, this this is brilliant. (laughs) And I, I, you know, I'm really enjoying the twist to this conversation because obviously we spoke at the beginning of how kind of um, under under um, appreciated perhaps UK hip hop was up against its other contemporaries like grime and draw. But what we're actually talking about now is celebrated moments where... No, that's great. Because I fucking love it. It's fucking great. And, and this is what I... We're, fa- <laughs> we're fast-tracking it in this interview, which is fine, because I won't do this on my channel, but I'm going to... Because what I'm doing yeah. in the UK Legends show is I'm doing it super slow. I'm probably going to do it for the next 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's the way to do it. And because I'm going to write potentially my PhD on something that ties in, yeah. I can do it the whole way through. That's right. And it can, I can write and I can have all of this content here to kind of... Oh, that's um, crazy. But yeah, we, we, you know, all of these people, I am I, when I get to every single person we've said here today, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do whole episodes on them where I go through their whole catalogue and deep, every, deep, deep. pull up every interview and we really, really do it. But, but yeah, so what's your next? Rag and Bone Man. Okay, that's coming way forward. Yeah, but we're yeah, going to run big, it forward big now. Up, big up Rag and Bone Man. And that like is... High focus, and yeah. it, it, I was gonna say, yeah. I was gonna say, Ocean Wisdom. I was gonna say, earlier, Ocean Wisdom too. Yeah. But <laughs> the thing is, because I was gonna say, I should point that out in the time where I said that scene was dead, yeah. and I still think it kind of is dead. But they created their own scene out of it, yeah. the high focus kind of yeah. crowd, and you know, I'm like, oh, these lot got we got left behind, and gigs and all them done all this, and you you, you see a couple of those examples, and yeah. you're like, mm, maybe not. Because a few of there's been a few big successes yeah, yeah. to come out of yeah, yeah. of that world. Yeah, and um, the primo tune of four hours. Did four hours. Like, yeah, yeah, crazy, crazy. Just love it. So yeah, big up, big up, Rag and Bone man, man. Yeah, he uh, a, 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 a re- respectfully a, a trodden ground so far as Plan B. Did he come? He came and done the, the yeah, show. Yeah, he yeah, came yeah. The podcast. I, I, we talked yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. You know, it's like I, uh, I don't know if I watched that. I've definitely seen <coughs> clips. I definitely need to watch that. If yeah, I alluded to the to the idea that you know the, the door opener was maybe. Aloe Black, Lemon Dollar, that kind of soul. A sound that was sound happening that at was the happening, time, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, Plan B kind of lent on that. Well, that's another one we you could know, have Bruno said. Bruno Mars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Plan B for yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. you know. I think he's another one that yeah, yeah, yeah. really opened some doors that actually doesn't even get mentioned at all. Yeah, like which is quite do. yeah, quite strange, he should, yeah. Jamie T. is a producer, right, who... Um, yeah. He done that... Um, you stars that, in your eyes. Do you know? Do it with stars in your eyes. You know that guy. That guy? Know. Was the, that Jamie the one, T? The one I think of of him, if I'm right, mm. the Drake and Rihanna song. Um, uh, the Drake and Rihanna song. Um, take care. Mm. Ta- I'll take yeah, care yeah, yeah, of yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was I think it was a Jamie T song where he sampled. sampled no, he sampled someone else. <laughs> Who did he sample? Like a classic, like, you know, 70s soul singer. Mm. And it's all the same lyrics. And he made this whole beat out of it. And then wow. Drake heard that and was like, oh, 
I'll have some we're gonna, that. and it's basically the same beat. It's, it's really? Like, when you hear all three versions, it's kind of crazy. Do you get paid for that? Did anyone get paid for that? No, no, yeah, he's, yeah, he's credited as a producer on, Yo, on the song. Oh, well, then you, then you do stop yeah, making yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's publishing for, yeah, yeah. You, you're set, you put yeah, the money yeah, yeah. in things. Drake does that all the time, though. He'll find some kind of, some other record. Yeah. I, I only realised this yesterday, because what's, oh, I'm going to forget her name as well. The, the One Dance, the girl who sang on One Dance, who's from the UK, was like okay. a UK garage record. Okay, uh, I can't remember. You know, you're like, you got me. Kyla. Oh, Kyla. Kyla. Oh, no. Yeah. So I, I, so I was, I was yeah, going. I love that tune. Yeah, yeah big song. I, I interviewed yeah. her as well in the, when, I, when I first started. When that song just was out, I done yeah, it. She I done seems like a sweetheart as well. Oh, she was, yeah, she was lovely. Yeah. And I, she was so just excited, yeah. like happy that yeah. she made this record ages ago. Yeah. It had a bit of success and you're just sitting there one That's day. The dream. You're sitting there and you just, Drake phoned you one day <laughs> and like, oh, do you mind? Look, I've used your record. Yeah. Do you mind if I use it? Would you like us to put your name as a featured artist on it? And then, like, anyway, I, I knew about all of that. I, I, I always love, I love a story like that because yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I a success story, story, right? Like and um, but yesterday we were arguing. Like, I was arguing with someone online about Drake has ghostwriters and all this. And they're pulling out all these like song credits, yeah. And they were going, "Look at this!" And um, it had uh, Corey Johnson written on a on a Drake yeah thing. And I was like, "What's that?" I didn't even, I, couldn't, I didn't have the name of the song. I was like, what, Corey Johnson produced a song for Drake? And then I went and found an interview of Corey Johnson saying, yeah, yeah, I produced a song. And it was One Dance. Someone said to me, you know, don't quote me, but the person sent to me said she knew, you know, she was actually involved in the whole movement and label. And she said he didn't, he didn't do anything on the record. That was her claim. I'm not saying that. But it was apparently on his label. Uh, he's, and when I, the interview I saw, he said he was one of the composers on the record. Okay. So he's credited... Of the original, so he's credited on that Drake record. He actually said in his interview, he said that it's the third biggest, like UK record. Maybe like I don't, I don't know what his claim was it, it, internationally. Maybe like with a UK yeah. producer or something yeah. of all time or something. Yeah. And he was the other two he named weren't even like hip hop records or whatever. So, but anyway, that is, you know, that's another, that's another just moment, I guess. Anyway, that a UK. Oh, this is just uh, having a big moment in America. What about um, um what about Flow Down and Fred again? You know, with the you know the current yeah um yeah I, I haven't listened I haven't listened to the music enough, but it's crazy that um it's incredible the isn't accolades it? that are going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying it's very incredible. I just love those yeah. moments where yeah, you know, yeah. the gongs are hit and you've got yeah, like yeah, yeah, real yeah. artists that you know yeah. have worked their lives around just doing what they do naturally all this time. Yeah, and then you have. You know, and they've done all right yeah. over the years, but then to have this really big... Yeah, you can't front like, them. And you're just like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, but they they deserve that. Without 100%, question. No, 100%. Like, fucking they put the work in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyone that says anything different... Do you know what I mean? Because that's so yeah, important yeah, yeah, that yeah. people get the rights to, that they richly deserve, isn't it? They, yeah. They no, 100%. Like... I'm, I'm, I'm always... I'm always... I've always just never... <laughs> I've never been a hater. Yeah? I've never yeah. been a hater. And I've always been... And that was like a part of our thing. Mud family, we'd always... We'd, would be very anti hater. Yeah. Very mm. anti haters beef we had in the streets, we would call them haters. Like these people are haters. Yeah. yeah. And it's like they they I don't know. I don't know if they used to be a thing like that, but I've I've realized that actually a lot of people celebrate being a hater. This whole Drake and Kanye thing is yeah. um no not uh, Drake and Kendrick yeah, beef yeah. that's going yeah, on yeah. now. Yeah. Everyone's going crazy or whatever about it. But I'm I've, I don't really like the Kendrick song that much because the second half of it, he literally raps about how, how much of a hater he is. He's like, I hate the way you dress. I hate this. I hate that. Yeah. I hate this. And I was like, eh. and I get what he's doing. Mm. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. genius. Yeah, yeah. Because straight people all over the world is rap people mm. hate on the successful guy. So yeah, yeah. that's catering to all of them. Yeah. All the haters all across the world. Yeah. Or like underground people yeah. who hate the hate this pop star. Swarms of haters. Kind of like, yeah. Yeah, hate, hate. Yeah, yeah. But I've just never been that guy. You know what I'm saying? So I, think, I, I think love celebrating all them I'm, people. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw light on on this subject because I. Uh, what was it John Lydon Sex Pistols mm. you know he's the most outspoken aggressor he, he's got something to say all the time but for his time it's like you know he said something reasonably profound he, he said uh, um, I'm I'm not saying this about my country because I hate the people I'm saying it for them to recognise it because I love the people what did he say though? Like, that sounds like God I, save the Queen. You know these kind of songs. You know just songs that were like yeah, yeah against yeah, the establishment. Yeah, pretty vacant. Yeah, 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 like yeah. That, that's yeah. A, that's that's great. I'd love to see where he said that. That's how I feel. Yeah, and I get called out a lot because I call because I talk a lot of race issues and I'm a white guy. So yeah. it's like 
oh my God, you hate your people and whatever. And I'm like, no, no, I love, I love them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I want to do better yeah. and I want us to change, change and, and, and improve. Not that I've heard anything. I mean, I yeah, don't yeah. know fucking. Um, yeah, it's good you don't feel like you didn't know I don't, that. Hey, listen, man, I, I'm, I don't feel. <laughs> yeah. I, don't think, I don't think, you know what? You're a very positive energy person, I think. I, I just don't see that. that shit. I don't think people would chat that shit to you. I don't you know see that shit. One other I want to go, I want to go back to. We're talking about moments, yeah. Go on, Blade. Of course, Blade. You know what I'm saying? Because um, with, with the band Feeder, <laughs> was it the B Feeder? No, no. Don't no. see the signs. What was that? Was it Feeder? No, it just Mark B and Blade. Yeah, but that remix they did as well. Oh, oh, is that what it is? I, yeah, see, I, I don't even know that. I just, yeah, 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 yeah. That might be Mark B, is. Blade, and I know, they, I know it was a remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, I, when listen, and I've, I think I've gushed enough to him about it in the past. But the moment I saw that on top of the pops, right, and there's Blade giving it like that. I mean, that was just he. You know, I think Oasis were on the same yeah, pop, yeah. top of the pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't even touch the the, the realness of that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. performance. That, and that was just that was a moment <laughs> for me. Well, that was might have been one of the earliest ones. Where I was just like, oh, that's a rapper like who's yeah. proper in this world. Um, trotting. I was like, whoa, yeah. uh, you know. Um, and that was just crazy. Yeah. And I don't think he gets his flowers enough for it. And I think he got a lot of haters then <laughs> to now. And that's probably why. I think a lot of people hate him. Oh, my God, but why him, though? And I think there was a lot of that in our scene. Yeah. And then... No, no, that wasn't our scene, mate. That was their scene. That, yeah. that kind of... That kind of why him, though, kind of thing is not really like... That That doesn't come into our sphere. No, but I think... It, they're not us personally, but I'm saying in the UK hip-hop scene, I think a lot of it's there. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you and think then, it's still there now? Um, I mean, yeah, that's what's what killed it. That's like I said, it's what's killed the scene. It's what's killed it. It's like, there's no, examples there's, we're there's, now. There's, there's nothing to hate on any, any anymore, apart no, from yeah. those few really, a few uh, okay. that it's like Rag and yeah. Bone Man. And the ones that have done really big, I guess, like you said, um, I think they're, they're hard to hate on, right? Um, and But they are hated on. Yeah, like High Focus are hated on crazy as well. You know what I'm saying? There's hate from all angles. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah, are yeah. hated. They're like, oh, yeah, but they're just this. So it, there's always a dismissal. Yeah. yeah? I, I felt it myself. When, cause I've never, I never had none of these moments as an artist, right? But I almost, I was always bubbling and close. Yeah. And like I, you know, I signed to Kemet Entertainment in, um, for the second time in 2006, after they'd had the Kalashnikov success. So they were like, yeah. there was only two big labels. Yeah. Low Life. Yeah. And Kemet. Yeah, was that's like right. the, Was the main, really. And yeah. there was a few others, m most of the others were like around and associated with Low Life. What was Manager's label? What was that called? Um, oh, I can't remember. That was a bit later. Though. Yeah, it, it, might, it might have been, it might have been going on then, but it wasn't, it hadn't, you know, none of these labels had done anything that, that, like, to, to, to that point where yeah. it's like, Low Life did a Skinny Man album. These are both yeah, big moments as crazy, well, right? Yeah. Low Life did a Skinny Man album, which actually did, did chart as well. And, and, um, Kemet did the Kalashnikov album, which blew up Channel U's quite responsible yeah, yeah, yeah. for a lot of what went on. And that, I think that influenced Grime, it influenced hip hop, it did, it did crazy things, yeah. right? So I signed back with Kemet after that Clash album, like yeah. me, Tibbs, um, 1C, and they were kind of like, who's going to be our next thing after yeah. this Kalashnikov success? Um, and I just noticed it. I was like, yo, there was other rappers that were bubbling at the time. Yeah. And they were there was a very much why are you attitude. I think some of them pretty much said it to me. Really? Yeah. And I'm not gonna say their names because some of them I'm friends with. Really? And some of these rappers, some of the rappers who came up to me, came up to me was like, give them my number. Yeah. Why why they're not signing me? Yeah. Not like why they're signing you. They're not realizing they're saying that. Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, they should talk to me. Give them my number, take my number and give it to them. Yeah. One one rapper I've never ever I've never say his name because I respect him a lot. He's huge now. Right. Way bigger than me. Right. Yeah, he has he has millions of views. Big rapper, yeah, on his own. But it's wow. like at that at that moment he was a bit in a haterish thing because I because I had this rec I got given the record deal really? and I took I, I went to them. I'm not a hater. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. I went to them. Yeah. I said, oh yeah, I saw so and so the other day. He said to give you his number, and they were like, yeah, yeah, he's been trying to show us. We're not interested. Really? But like bad move on them. Yeah. Got, like I say, some, I'll tell you a fair. But you would have been A and R. You'd have missed A and R right there. Because he is someone who blew up. <laughs> right? Wow. But um, there was just a hater energy, and I just realized anyone got something. It's because they just because there wasn't mm. enough to go around. Mm. Mm. It's just like everyone's. Like, ah. But you're right. Those labels you mentioned. I mean, there was a uh, and you know, high focus, but there was an energy of like, well, even our even our own scene is doing that and behaving that way. Mm. One person that definitely took the charge on that was Sway. Oh, that's a moment. Yeah. 
pick up swear. I spoke to him recently. Yeah, his energy, yeah, yeah. his energy was like <laughs> he he didn't allow nah. any of those barriers and borders of scenes to dictate what he was doing, he, and he made any every, one guy. It yeah, was yeah. him, man. And he, and at the moment when there was this big split of gram and hip hop, UK hip hop, he made himself yeah. respected in both and be yeah. the probably for a moment the biggest thing in think, either yeah. that's yeah. right as did in Kalashnikov both. as well I think and Skinny I think those yeah, two yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah. well no no I, I would say those Kalashnikov and Skinny 2004 boom that, that was deal. ridiculous yeah. those two albums but then Sway was like the year later or yeah. thing and then he took it to a higher level yeah that's right well, he, he, yeah, he did he did because he eventually put out he done a few mixtapes mm. and he eventually put out the album and that the brand it in the re- market. It, reached, it, yeah. it reached a bit higher than what, what um, Skinny and Clash done, I reckon. And he just killed it. And he did it hand... Like, he was everywhere. Yeah. With those, I had those CDs that he handed me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he was outside every yeah. the, from the smallest event to the biggest with those... Um, this is my demo. Yeah. Or it wasn't... It was called This Is My... I can't remember if the album was This Is My Demo or... Yeah. Or which it was. But, yeah, he he... He's game changer, and he's still in the game now. He bought like, in KSI um, and people like that, didn't he? KSI yeah. and like um, T- Tigs the author. Tigs the author, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big up them. Look, obviously Tigs the author and show and prove, show and prove my guy. Um, yeah. Crazy. The producer, he, pro- you know, someone... he's so fucking cool. He just, it, yeah. his energy is wicked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good yeah. people's. Yeah, man, the best, the best. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but yeah, sorry, hundred percent. Um, so many, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's so many, and it, it's like we sit here and act like, oh yeah, no, it never worked out. No, it, it, it really worked, did, it work, really out, did yeah. work out, man. And I said, that, that, I think that is the, the conundrum and juxtaposition of everything we're yeah. saying. It's like on one hand, it's like, well, it didn't quite work out, like right, because there was these sorts of people and this sort of thing yeah, happened. Yeah. But on the flip side, I think that you know, I think the, the 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 motto of this podcast is like cream always rises to the top. You know? Yeah, yeah. If it's good, it's good. Uh, but look at it now. <laughs> My 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 thing is now when you look at now we have a like multi million pound industry going yeah. on. Look, we have I don't know how many years ago when I first realized oh there's is, is he a millionaire? Well, I think it was like Wiley or something or mm. Jamie. There was these conversations online. It's like is he a millionaire? Yeah. Has he made a million? Yeah. And it was this big thing yeah. like oh my god, is there a millionaire rapper in the UK now? As wow. if as if you know Dizzy Rascal <coughs> probably did it before all of them, but and yeah. probably others. But it's just I couldn't really comprehend yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Now there's lo- like there are so many millionaire rappers now. Yeah. Who I've never even heard any of their songs. No, 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 like right. these young people, I, I, yeah. I'll see an interview on a channel and I'll be like, the, like the size of the chain he's yeah. wearing yeah. and whatever. I'm like, and the, or the, like the, just the whole lifestyle. Some of it can be fake, obviously, but you can kind of tell when it isn't, isn't. And I start looking up their songs and I'm like, oh, you're killing it. I never even heard of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and it's just there's so many of them. Like literally millionaire rappers killing it. And my thing is, I just don't. I've, I've, I discuss all of this to look at what's gone wrong, and da, 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 and it's just interesting, right? Interesting on a social level, all sorts. But I actually don't think it's so different. It's just hip hop to me, it's like all of it, and like what we did yeah. back then. Yeah, it did work on the level because look what they're doing now, now. and that's it. Yeah, they're killing it. Yeah, and they wouldn't have. Like, no, I'm not going to say they couldn't have done that if we didn't. But all of those things we've yeah. talked about, from the gigs is to the to Graham, all and to us, to you, to everybody, yeah. all played a part in that. You know what I'm saying? And rest and in peace, MC Duke. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Rest, rest in peace, MC Duke. Duke. I, I need to, I need to talk on that probably because because yeah. me and me and Duke had um, we didn't really get on, and I've been very vocal about that. He's been very vocal about that, right? Um, I said this on my show the other day mm. that I need to give him his flowers properly. So I'm going to do it. On my on the, on, on, oh, the, on the show yeah, and the man. thing, but look, R.I.P. to him. And yeah. like, I said, I already said this on my show the other day on my live because I, I was like, um, I just want to say R.I.P. to MC Duke. And um, a lot of people were, you know, there was a voice not going around when they were saying he, he was ill and he's likely to pass and stuff. And people it said in it, you know, if you've got beef with him or whatever, you should reach out. And yeah. they had this like, people were sending me that voice note, and I thought, well, no, if he's like ill. Me and we were never like friends like that, so I wouldn't want to interrupt yeah, and yeah. disrespect. Like, yeah, yeah. L- let me just leave that alone. And yeah. I even did a podcast while that was being spoke about, and they asked me, "Do I want to talk about?" It? I was like, "No, I don't want to talk about that," because I don't want to. 
disrespect. I don't want to bring bad energy. Yeah, yeah? and I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to bring a bad energy when I do speak about him yeah. anyway. But because his life is trivial. It's yeah, not trivial. Not, this so is life. I was just like, look, yeah, yeah. Because I've called him out. He's called yeah. me out. We've had we have had a problem, right? But at the same time, I already also on the first episode of me and Blade's podcast, bigger than us. I wanted him to be the guest and I asked him to. I reached out, he said no, and then he said no, right? He said yes, then he said no. So I wanted him to be the mm. guest to show it's bigger than us, we yeah. can squash stuff. Yo. And he, he wouldn't do it. <laughs> gutted. Yeah? So I've gutted about that, right? Mm. And then, you know, I, I carried on winding him up about it, they wouldn't do it. So, but it's, it's banter in a way, but it's yeah. whatever, right? But I always planned, when I started this UK Legends show, I told you I'm doing it in order. He's going to be coming quite early. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm already. Cahoots. I was already ready to, yeah. I'm going to have, have to do a whole episode yeah. on MC Duke and yeah. I'm going to have to give him his flowers and show him love yeah. because I, whatever problem I got with him, I want to do that. And did you see, this is the other thing I thought was so sad, man, but did you see the Skepta thing what? clip that came out? No. So Skepta did an interview with Nardwa, you know, the guy, yeah. the Canadian guy that always pulls out all the records yeah. and stuff. This dropped like two days after Duke passed away and you know, Nardwa was pulling out the records and he started pulling out early. He pulled out Derek B and he went, here's Derek yeah. B. And he was like, I'm, just, I'm showing you. And then he pulled out MC Duke and Skeptos grabbed the record. And he's like, whoa, because a lot of people won't know about this. But if you're talking about like, there's a lot of conversations on who was the first rappers in the UK because if MC Duke's name's not in there, then it's not a real conversation. Ooh. And he held up the thing and he was like, and it, you know, like, even like me and the guy don't like each other, whatever, like... I just looked and I thought I saw, I was just, it was sad. It was beautiful. Mm. Yeah. What a timing to have him like Bes yeah. respected yeah. and platformed like that. But at the same time, I know <coughs> how much it means to him that he probably, a lot of those arguments mm. that even I had and he's had with other people is like feeling like he didn't get his respect. Yeah. So it's like, I just sat there and thought, I just thought, I, I, I know that would have meant so much to him to see that. It's quite sad he didn't get to yeah. see that. Just like, do you know what I'm saying? Like on a yeah, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigger, bigger, so bigger, when bigger. I do my when I do my next UK Legends show, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that clip up and play it and talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Anyway, yeah, bittersweet but beautiful. So I'll wrap the MC Duke definitely, and he is one of the he is a, he's a moment yeah, as well. Yeah. He's a moment mm -hmm. of it's a moment before I knew what yeah. he had. It was a moment of something that hadn't been done before. This has been a moment. <laughs> I mean, the flowers most definitely in your hands. I mean, thank you so much for. Keep yeah. just spending time here and just you know I, it, we came in with no expectations. No, yeah, yeah, no, no real plan of what we were going to do. Yeah, no. But I guess yeah, because I've been talking about that kind of thing and talking about putting things in the history books. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's dope. It's fucking yeah. great. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. flipping the play. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Well, this won't be the last, that's for sure. I yeah, mean, we'll just do it again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right. That's almost too much fun. It's like, oh. Uh, yo. Uh, killer, killer podcast. Out of, it was out of fashion. Never fucking flip inside the place. Um, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Uh, crime don't pay. Neither do they. You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Crime pays. But, yeah. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs>